All right, today we're going to show you a typical brake inspection. Basically, what we're going to do is take off a brake hub here, and we're going to inspect the brakes, the linings, the springs, the slave cylinder inside. First off, we'll go ahead and take off the dust cap. Uh, in this case, it's a bearing, buddy. Next is he's taking out the locking pin. There's either a cotter pin that goes through the center here, but once you get that lock washer off, you just go ahead and just take off the, the nut. And just pull your whole hub off. Okay. First thing you want to check for is grease on the linings. And sure enough, we got a, a grease all over the linings here. That's on this side here, and it's probably smeared around over to the other side, as you can tell. Uh, but other than that, there's no, you want to look for leakage around the seals here. You see, there's any, usually you know gravity will pull it down to the side, but there's nothing there, so we're in good shape. The springs are nice and tight. There's nothing broke there. The other thing is just dusty, and it's got a little grease everywhere, but it's not bad. But since the pads are, are contaminated now pretty much going to replace it. And looking at our back side of our hub here, you can tell how the grease is coming out the back side here. It's being thrown off due to centrifugal force. So that tells us right there that the seal went bad and that's where all the grease came out of and went all over the shoes. Go ahead and disconnect our brake line. Okay. And then this is all one piece going to the backing plate, so we really can't twist this off. You, pull, you knock off this tab right here, and then you can pull the line out, and then we can undo it from the back of the backing plate. And sometimes you can pull these out with pliers. This is so rusted, we can just go ahead and just knock it around until we get it to come off. There you go. And then the next thing we can do is unbolt the backing plate from the axle with these four bolts right here. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off the hose. We'll reuse that. See, since the whole thing twists, that's why you had to take it off with the other half. And basically, we'll just go ahead and reverse the procedure of installing a new backing plate. All right, we want to go ahead and reinstall our old brake line. Now, just double check to make sure there's no cracks in the line. Take it and flex it around a little bit and kind of look for cracks. If you don't see anything, you're going to be in pretty good shape. You don't see anything, just go ahead and reinstall it. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our backing plate. When we install our backing plate, make sure you have the right one on the right side. This one's marked left, so that'll be for the driver's side of the trailer. Of course, the right side would be the passenger side. Now also, the new backing plate doesn't come with any bolts or studs like the old one did, so we'll have to supply new bolts, lock washers, and nuts. All right, we'll go ahead and tighten down our bolts now. All right, now we'll go ahead and reinstall our brake line here. Now route it to make sure it doesn't rub on anything. And once you have it set up, go ahead and put your clip back in. Throw the line back on. When you get them to stop, give them a quarter turn past, and then that should be a plain enough torque to hold everything together. Once you have your hub reinstalled, then you need to readjust uh, the brakes inside. You want to pop off one of these dust covers here. All right, you want to tighten them up until you can't turn the hub by hand, and then back off about 10 clicks. Eight, nine, ten. You should end up with a very slight drag. bleed the hydraulic brakes on a trailer. First off, you want to top off your master cylinder with the appropriate fluid. To pump the fluid from the master cylinder out, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. 
Sometimes I'll have the emergency lever that the safety chain will pull. Okay, what you can do is unbolt the plate that holds the lever in place and then use that lever to actuate the master cylinder and force fluid through. Some of them you're going to have to just manually activate up here on the on where the ball goes and manually activate it, pull it in and out. Or like on this model here, it might be a little lever underneath that you can use. What I'm going to do is just take off the cover off our bleeder valve here and we'll go ahead and open it up. Okay, then we're going to just take a rubber hose and just, just slide it onto the bleeder itself. So then, all right, we'll run our line into a clear container. The reason why we use a clear container is that when we pump the fluid, we, can, we know that until we get no bubbles coming out the bottom, then we know we got pure fluid in there, no air. You have four wheel cylinders. You do the back ones first. You work your way back up towards the front of the trailer. When you get clear fluid running out, the first uh, bleeder valve, then just go ahead and pull it back and hold it there and then shut off the bleeder valve. 